The New Zealand Army has a long and proud history. During this history, it has fought in a number of major conflicts, including the Boer War, the First and Second World Wars, in Korea, Vietnam, the Malayan Emergency, Indonesia-Malaysia confrontation, and more recently in Iraq and Afghanistan. This has happened despite New Zealand's geographic location. New Zealand is blessed and perhaps cursed by the tyranny of distance. One of the few countries in the world that knows it will not face a conventional military invasion. Too hot for the penguins, and as long as Australia continues to win the occasional rugby test, Australia won't invade. But why the roles and capabilities required of the Royal New Zealand Navy and Royal New Zealand Air Force are perhaps more obvious? What about those of New Zealand's army? New Zealand needs an army, and it needs a ground force that can act independently in New Zealand's national interest as well as contributing to Australian and US operations where appropriate. G'day and salutations. Today's briefing, New Zealand Army, where to now? Uh, note this briefing was suggested by a subscriber. Beyond defending New Zealand from a conventional ground force attack, the New Zealand government will want conventional army capability that can contribute to allies and friends further afield. The most serious of these scenarios is high-end conflict against a peer or near-peer competitor. In such a scenario, New Zealand won't be fighting alone. It will be fighting with Australia and the United States. In April 2023, the New Zealand and Australian Army signed the Plan ANZAC Bilateral Security Cooperation Plan. The plan is to manage and support interoperability while progressing to interchangeability. A key element of this plan is for New Zealand to field a motorised infantry battalion group within an Australian Army Brigade, itself within an integrated American, British, Canadian, Australian, New Zealand division. Apart from high intensity conflict, the Army also needs to contribute to New Zealand's humanitarian assistance and disaster response missions and regional stabilisation missions within this large area of strategic interest. Possible areas of operation within this area of strategic interest for both conventional military, humanitarian assistance and disaster response and stabilisation missions include the Southwest Pacific, Southeast Asia and East Asia. So how does New Zealand create a force to satisfy these varied requirements to cover a large area of operations? New Zealand's Army Orbat includes three regular manoeuvre units, an Armoured Cavalry Reconnaissance Regiment and two regular infantry battalions. It also includes three reserve infantry battalions. There is a field artillery regiment together with combat and service support units. Additionally, New Zealand has a Special Operations Force Regiment. Of course, units need to be appropriately equipped for the mission. New Zealand has recently expanded its Bushmaster Protected Mobility Vehicles inventory with 43 Bushmasters replacing the armoured Pinsgarza vehicles. This total will consist of 25 infantry carrying vehicles, 10 command vehicles, 4 ambulances, 2 logistics and 2 maintenance vehicles. Now, the Bushmaster is a very good vehicle for its role but it is not an APC, let alone an IFV, which are needed for higher intensity conflict. If New Zealand's motorised battalion group is to support Australia's Armoured Combined Arms Brigade, or to come up against a peer or near peer adversary, then New Zealand will need something more capable than the Bushmasters, perhaps something like the Boxer in its APC configuration. If New Zealand is to replace its reconnaissance labs, LAVs, uh, and or needs a more capable combat reconnaissance vehicle to complement a Boxer-like APC, then it might go for the Boxer CRV, um, as Australia has. An important capability the New Zealand Army will need to address is artillery. The New Zealand Army uses a 105mm gun, which in most scenarios is no longer capable and a move to 155mm capability is needed, especially if the unit is to work with Australia's regular formations. 
One option is a wheel self-repel gun. While initially more expensive, it needs less crew and is more survivable than towed guns. This of course would fire the same rounds as those used by Australia's 155mm guns. The Army also needs some form of kinetic air defence. It doesn't need to be expansive, not even to the range of Australia's NASAMs, but certainly at least a very short range air defence capability, such as a man pad system. Finally, given the expansion and use of UAVs and drones in conflicts, the New Zealand Army will need to bring into service a non-kinetic anti-drone capability. This capability could be vehicle mounted or and or a man portable system. What will the Motorised Infantry Battalion Group look like? Well, according to New Zealand's Ministry of Defence, the current framework structure for this formation to be part of an Australian uh, motorised brigade will be as follows. Two motorised uh, infantry companies and a reserve light infantry company. As detailed by the New Zealand Ministry of Defence, this formation doesn't mention an artillery component, but if there is one, it would have to be the towed 105mm guns currently in service. One example of how a motorised infantry battalion group could look like, given personnel and funding challenges, is as follows. An armoured cavalry squadron, two motorised infantry companies, and a self-propelled artillery battery. Let me know your thoughts in the uh, comments below. In summary, New Zealand has signed up to provide a motorised infantry battalion group as part of an Australian brigade. It is likely such a force would only need to be committed against a peer or near peer threat, with the PLA amongst the most likely opponents. How would this force fare in such a scenario? That concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers, so please subscribe, like and share. Until next time, Vale de Cerro.